Good knocked all my hill crushing maniacs. Tonight we're going to talk about what I call Pepper's Mod. Uh, I call this Pepper's Mod because when I became a father to a lovely little girl named Pepper, I found that riding around on my ancient three and five speed bikes uh, became somewhat of a chore. You see, you're limited in gearing. Sure, you can do some stuff like, you know, retrofit a, uh, a, American bottom bracket to, you know, BSC threaded adapter into your frame and then maybe run some mountain bike cranks, but, you know, I really wanted to attack the rear cog. So, this style of three-prong cog, see there's a, there's a tap there, there, and there, they have been around since the dawn of time. This is an ancient kid's bike wheel, it was the one that was handy, but you will still see this sort of interface on modern uh, Shimano Nexus and Alfine hubs. So basically the cogs are the same. Uh, the only real difference is that some of them will be completely flat and some of them will be offset up like you can see on that one. So what is Pepper's Mod? Pepper's Mod is uh, a little bit of tomfoolery that is tried and true and I have tested it on thousands of miles. Um, what you can do is find yourself a three-speed or multi-speed internally geared hub or coaster brake cog, one of the three tab ones. You need to make sure it's a 16 tooth, like this one here. So, this is not out of the ordinary. It's just a normal stamped steel 16 tooth cog. Um, no maker indication on it anywhere. Uh, so, when playing around, what I noticed was a 64BCD mountain and hybrid 4-bolt chainring fits bum, 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 just like that. And you can see, oh, I can't get it straight. The holes line up. So, I'll show you what hardware I use. Um, and, you know, for people who are absolute beginners, I'll, I'll, I'll just go into this a little bit. When, when you're uh, measuring how hard or easy a bike is to pedal, you know, relative to how much energy you put in, uh, how fast you spin your, your legs, um, the bigger the ring in the front and the smaller the ring in the back, the harder it'll be. And the bigger the cog in the back and the smaller the ring in the front, the easier it'll be. It's the gear ratio, right? So, being that even in modern times, the biggest one of these I think you can get is a 22 tooth. So, that's pretty goddamn big, but it's still not hill crushingly big. It's still not yellow Sheldon big. So, the hardware that I'm going to be using today, and you don't have to use this, you can go to the hardware store, find what fits. Um, these are little knurled thread inserts. We got a big like bag full of them from FSA I think so um, I'm using these because the fit is really outstanding it fills up pretty much the entire hole and doesn't really leave any slack there they protrude a tiny bit past the top as you can see so I'm gonna put a washer on that Put in one. Two. Three. And four of these little guys. Uh, I actually realized right before I started making this video that I was all out of the specific hardware I wanted. So normally I would find a little 6x1 metric bolt that was maybe half as long as this. So threads only to where the tip of my fingernail is. But for the sake of demonstration, I am sure that you will get my gist. Here's something important to remember. Use Loctite. For your safety, and for my mental well-being, you're going to want to use at least blue Loctite, if not red. 
I'm going to put a little bit on each one. Now here's the funny part. When I install this, I'm not entirely sure that these bolts will, uh, will clear the hub, but we'll find out in a minute. Point being, you don't have to use this hardware. This is the wrong hardware to use, and it would be much flatter if I uh, had thought ahead and actually prepared. I'm going to use my trusty three-way. Um, quick note on the three-way. I always thought Wrench Force was crap because it was sort of an OEM tool company uh, for Trek, I believe. Uh, fun little fact, most of the Wrench Force stuff was made by fucking Snap-on. I, I collect this stuff now. I pick up these Snap-on manufactured Wrench Force tools whenever I can. Um, they, and if you can find them, the, uh, the spoke wrenches are fucking amazing. So, yeah. Some of the Wrench, wrench Force stuff, like pumps and, uh, you know, all the little tiny, like, take-with-you tools, they're just garbage from China. But the actual shop tools, uh, the pedal wrenches, the uh, combination wrenches, the uh, crank pullers, all that stuff was made by Snap-on. So, uh, you know, go ahead and outbid me on eBay so I'll never get another piece of it again. Go in here. We're going to tighten these up. I'm going to take my insufficiently geared hub, or wheel, remove my little circlip here, my cog will slide off, my peppers modded cog will slide on, and this is my least favorite part. There you go. You just became Pantani when it comes to motherfucking hills. Um, the original Peppers mod was installed six years ago and has never come loose and has never failed me. Everything's really nicely, uh, everything's really nicely reinforced, <laughs> especially if you use hardware that's not totally bogus. So use this, do this for uh, friends and clients. Just remember where the fuck it came from. Oh, John T., the Japanese ass master, and his daughter Pepper. Have a good night.